One of the biggest expenditures in every nation across the world is their military. They all aim to have the biggest and best forces compared to their neighbors. However, even though a lot of money can be allocated to brand new projects, not every one of them is actually completed. Sometimes those lost programs can cost billions of dollars. Today, we're going to look at some of the most expensive military projects that the United States abandoned and the reason why they were canceled. Projects such as creating top-class helicopters, modernizing an aging ship fleet, streamlining a satellite service, and many more. So let's get started. We kick off with perhaps the most science fiction related project, the Airborne Laser. This device is mounted onto an aircraft and is primarily used as a defense against incoming missiles. The laser is able to burn a hole into the metal of the missile, leading to mechanical failure. As the Gulf War got underway in 1990 with the rise of Scud missiles, the U.S. began a project to implement this technology in the modern age. There had been other attempts, but those projects were decades old by that point. By 2002, the Boeing Yell-1, which had airborne laser in its later features, took its first flight. However, in 2011, the project was canceled due to the lack of progress and the amount of money spent. By 2014, the Boeing was retired and stripped for parts. Over its lifetime, the project cost an estimated $5.2 billion. During 1982, the U.S. Army created the Light Helicopter Experimental Program. The plan was to create a modern stealth and attack aircraft. By 1991, the contract was awarded to the Boeing Sikorsky team at the cost of $2.8 billion. They went to work on creating the RAH-66 Comanche. In 1996, the first flight was conducted successfully. The plan was to create a further nine choppers, including two prototypes by 2006. However, it wasn't to be. During 2004, news broke that the Army had terminated the creation of the Comanche line. At this point, $7.9 billion had been funneled into the program. The cause of canceling stemmed from the need to further upgrade the Comanches in order to be battle-ready. A study found that by canceling it now, the Army would save a further $14 billion. In its ashes, the Armed Reconnaissance Helicopter Program was born. However, that too would be later canceled in 2008. By 1995, the U.S. Army was looking to replace the M109 Paladin, a self-propelled howitzer. After all, this model was first made in 1963, so they got to work on creating the next generation, the XM-2001 Crusader. On top of the main Crusader, the program would also create a resupply vehicle. The Crusader itself was meant to highlight modern safety features as well with its composite armor and fire suppression system. For the more attacking side, the design was also going to have an increased autonomous function and digital processing to increase accuracy. By 2002, the U.S. had planned to build 480 Crusaders for the price of $11 billion, with the plan being that Crusaders should be battle-ready by 2008. Yet only a few months after the mass order, the program was scrapped. The main issues seem to be the Crusaders' lack of mobility and accuracy. Altogether, the program is said to have cost $2.2 billion. The Future Combat Systems Program was a large-scale attempt at modernizing the U.S. military. Many different projects were involved, such as the creation of manned and unmanned vehicles, as well as changing the equipment and uniform of their soldiers under the Future Force Warrior Project. The Future Combat Systems, or FCS, project was formally introduced in 2003, yet only six years later, the program was scrapped during 2009. The FCS project was meant to last until 2030. However, after $18.1 billion was plowed into it, with little progress, the project was pulled. Afterwards, the various projects within the FCS were allocated to different programs. The Ground Combat Vehicle Program, as the name suggests, was in charge of the vehicle aspects. That too was later cancelled. It's believed that similar modernizing and cancelled programs like the FCS has cost around $32 billion between 1995 and 2018. In the 1980s, the U.S. Marines wanted to create a modern amphibious assault vehicle. The idea was for the vehicle to be released at sea by an assault ship. It would then take Marines onto the shore and then have no issue with traversing on land. The plan would be called the Expeditionary Fighting Vehicle. The EFV was meant to replace the AAVP-781 assault amphibious vehicle that was created in 1972. The EFV was set to be used in 2015 and had a projected cost of $15 billion. However, by 2011, the project ran into many issues. The technology was challenging to implement. As the delays began to pile up, the decision was announced that the EFV program would be cancelled. By that time, $3.3 billion had already been spent. The program was later replaced with the Amphibious Combat Vehicle Project, with BAE Systems and Ivico winning the contract in 2018. 
One of the most important aspects in the military is real-time intelligence gathering about the enemy's position. With the success of the Joint Surveillance Target and Attack Radar System, also known as the Joint Stars Airplane, during the Gulf War in 1991, the U.S. Air Force wanted to create a modern version. In 2003, the initial $215 million contract was won by Northrop Grumman, Boeing, and Raytheon. They came up with the E-10 multi-sensor command and control aircraft. This model was set to combine sensor signals with ground and air radar tracking, then send real-time updates to ground troops. It was due by 2011, but by 2007, budget cuts came, and the E-10 project was scrapped. Around $1.9 billion was spent in total. The Air Force went back to the Joint Stars planes and decided to upgrade the model instead. In 1994, a plan was announced to merge the satellite systems operated by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, and the U.S. Air Force. This new satellite project was named the National Polar Orbiting Operational Environmental Satellite System, or NPOESS. It was primarily going to be used to monitor environmental factors on Earth, such as weather, oceans, land, and atmosphere. This merger was meant to save the U.S. billions of dollars. The first NPOESS satellite was penciled in to be launched in 2013. However, there were regular delays in its production. As a result, the cost began to skyrocket. In 2010, the U.S. government announced the NPOESS project was to be canceled. At this point, $5.8 billion had been spent on the failed concept. The project was then split into other programs, one of which was the Defense Weather Satellite System. This, too, was later canceled in 2012 and replaced by another program variation. On top of using the Air Force One airplane, the U.S. President also has Marine One in the shape of a helicopter. In 2005, plans went ahead to create a new fleet for Marine One. The winning design was the VH-71 Kestrel, yet not long after, the production was hit with delays and a steep rise in costs. In 2008, the estimated cost of the project reached $11.2 billion for 28 choppers. Each one would cost $400 million. In 2009, the overall estimated cost increased further to $13 billion. Due to the exorbitant fees and poorly received early helicopters, the project the project was cancelled. $3.7 billion had already been spent on the failed concept. Nine VH-17s were delivered to the U.S. Navy. As a way to recoup some of the lost money, in 2011, the U.S. sold the somewhat completed helicopters to Canada for $164 million. They planned to use the VH-71s as spare parts for their CH-149 Cormorant fleet. During 2001, the Next Generation Cruiser, also known as the CGX program, was announced by the U.S. government. The U.S. Navy was looking to replace the Ticonderoga-class cruiser, which had been in commission since 1983, and the Early Burke-class destroyer, which had been used since 1991. Nine CGX ships were ordered to begin with. The design of the ships would later inspire the Zumwalt-class destroyer that was created in 2016 for $22.5 billion. Only three of the Zumwalt were actually finished. Over the years, the CGX program struggled to find direction and was split into a number of smaller projects. Eventually, by 2010, the CGX program was scrapped altogether. Around $200 million had been spent on it up to that point. Instead, the U.S. decided to purchase additional, more modern versions of the Air Lee Burke-class destroyer. Final Fact Finish one of the most expensive aircrafts in the U.S. Air Force is the Northrop Grumman B-2 Spirit. With its iconic design, the cost of the airplanes in 1997 had an average of $737 million. Taking into account the development, engineering, and so on, the total cost of the program now stands at an incredible $2.1 billion per aircraft. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.